Alhamdulillah Shay'a. We begin with the praise of Allah, Lord of the Worlds. We praise Him, we seek His aid, we ask for His forgiveness, and we seek His protection from the evil of ourselves, from the evil of our actions. Whomever Allah guides, we know none can misguide, and whomever He misguides, we know none can guide. And we bear witness that there's no God but Allah alone. He is one, He has no like, and that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the man of praise, is his, uh, his slave and his final messenger. We praise Allah as well for bringing the hearts together on this day of Jummah, on this day of gathering. This day of gathering, as we all know, is a reminder of that first gathering. The first gathering when we're all brought out from the loins of our forefather, Adam alayhi salam. On that, on that day, Allah stood us in witness of his rububiyyah, and he asked us, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? And so we all witnessed him and we said, Bala, indeed you are. We know that this Juma then is a reminder of that gathering because that gathering sets the tone for the rest of our lives. It defines what this life is because on Yom al Qiyamah we will be asked about whether we remain faithful to that first covenant. This covenant we know is stamped into our hearts. It's something that we all recognize. We all became Muslim because we recognize that there was something true about this religion. We recognize there is something true about the Qur'an. We recognize there is something honest and beautiful about the character of, of our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and those who inherit of his character. This covenant was stamped into our hearts. And even though we may not recall it, this memory reveals itself in that we're always longing to go back to our Lord. We're always longing to leave this, this dunya and go back to that, primordial to that day of the primordial covenant from which we came. We all recognize that this world, this can't be it. It's, this world is not just jobs and careers. This world is not just entertainment and fun. We recognize that there must be something more. And so the soul, the soul longs for something more. It aches for something more. It seeks truth. It seeks beauty, capital T truth, capital T beauty. As Molana Rumi describes, the soul is like a reed flute that's been ripped from its reed bed. It's in lament. It's longing for that world. Yearning to make its way back home. Yearning to find the reed bed again. To go back to that place where it was a beholding the divine, where the soul felt at rest, felt at ease, and it felt in comfort. We know that the Prophet therefore tells us about this dunya. Kun fit dunya ka'annaka gharib o abiru sabil. Be in this world like someone alienated or like someone who's crossing a path and you're only there for a short while and you're not meant to belong there. We aren't from this world and our belonging is with Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We belong to Allah and to Him do we return. We are returning to Him, as we know from Rajiun is ismul fa'al. We are returning to Him in this very moment. It doesn't, it doesn't mean, this ayah does not mean that one day we will die and we will return to him. No, we are returning to him in every moment of our lives. Ra jirun, not yar jirun. In, in the Jummah, we are returning to him by attending the Jummah, as he has asked us to, to do. We return to Allah after Jummah by dispersing and going about our business. We, do, we return to Allah when someone ignorant or someone crass calls us out or offends us or shows us their anger. By, say, by speaking peacefully and, and calmly to them. When a, when we borrow something from someone else, we return to Allah by returning that thing back to Him and not by taking it for ourselves because that's what Allah has commanded. We return to Allah in every moment by doing what He tells us to do because when we do so, we find Him uh, at that place that, uh, that he uh, told us to go. The Sharia, we know, means a path. The Sharia, the divine law, is really a path. It's a wide path. It's a path to the divine. It's a path to realizing Allah's closeness with us because he is not far away. Allah commands us to visit the sick and to feed the poor. And in doing so, we again return to Allah the Prophet ﷺ says in a hadith Qudsi, Ibn Adam, maridu falam ta'udni. O son of Adam, I was sick and you did not vi visit me. 
Ya Rabb, how, how, uh, uh, how could I visit you when you are the Lord of the worlds? Did you not know that my slave so-and-so was sick, yet you did not visit him? Did you not know that had you visited him, you would have found him with me, you would have found me with him? Ibn Adam, I asked you for food, yet you did not feed me. Ya Rabb, how could I feed you when you're the Lord of the worlds? Did you not know that my slave so-and-so asked you for food, but you did not feed him? Do, do you not know that had you fed him, you would have found him with me? Ibn Adam, O oh, son of Adam, I asked you for a drink, yet you did not give me a drink. Ya Rabb, you are the Lord of the worlds. How could I give you a drink? Did you not know that my, that my slave so-and-so asked you for a drink, but you did not give it to him? Did, did you not know that had you given it to him, you would have found him with me? And so we find Allah when we go to the places that, that he has commanded us to go. We find him with us. We find him looking after us. We find him watching us. Many of us, we know that this agony that, that we feel in this world, that this longing for Allah, this longing to be done with this world, to be done with the trials and tribulations of this world, we long for Allah, but we cannot seem to perceive him at, at the level of consciousness. Yet, none of us would be so blind as to, if there was a wall in front of us, to walk into the, into the wall if we, had, if we were people with eyes and with sight. Yet, so many of us will walk straight into a sin, will walk straight into a disobedience that, that we know Allah is displeased with, yet we know Allah, Allah is with us. He is with you wherever you are. This world can seem more real. This world can seem more significant than Allah. Our job might seem more real. We might be so anxious and so worried about our jobs that we find ourselves cheating a little bit. We find ourselves lying a little bit. We find ourselves manipulating others to get ahead. What happened to wa huwa razzaqu dhul al matin? What happened to Allah, he who is the all-providing, the strong and the firm? He is more real than any of us. We hold grudges, anger, and resentment over how our families and how our friends have wronged us. And yet, uh, we still hope for Allah's forgiveness even though we do not forgive them. Doesn't Allah say, وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَهُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرحيم. Pardon others and overlook their faults. Would you not love for Allah to forgive you when Allah is the all-forgiving and the all-merciful? This is a contradiction. We are believers, yet we find ourselves worrying more about the things that don't matter than Allah who matters. We are living a contradiction. We cannot find solace in this dunya when dunya is the source of our pain. We expect Allah to forgive us when we won't for forgive others. We expect Allah to respond to our du'as when we do not respond to his, his commands, as he says in the Qur'an, أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانْ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي I respond to the call of the caller when he calls, so respond to me, yani, and then I will respond to you. Our friends and our brothers need our help, but when they are sick, we do not visit. When they are hungry, we do not feed them. Have we not heard the Prophet say, Wallahu fi awn al abdi ma kan al abdu fi awni akhi? Allah is in the assistance and helps his slave so long as his slave helps his brother. We go on backbiting and gossiping about the flaws of others, enjoying hearing how awful everyone else is as a means to soothe our own worries about our own shames. Yet we hope no one will learn about our shameful behaviors. Have we not heard 
The Prophet say, Man satara Musliman, satarahullahu fid dunya wal akhira. Whoever conceals a believer, Allah will con conceal him in this life and in the next life. This is the sacred version of the golden rule in Islam, which is that treat others how you want Allah to treat you. This world is a room of infinite mirrors. Everything around us is a mirror. Every person around us is a mirror reflecting back to us who we are. How you treat your, fe your fellow believers is reflected in how Allah treats you. And your relationship with Allah is reflected in how your fellow believers treat you. Are you so lost to think it's always someone else's fault? No, people are not these autonomous beings. People in reality are just divine conduits. Behind the mask of the person is the reality of Allah speaking to you, telling you about your own state, telling you about your own condition. Allah acts through them to wake you up, to snap you out of your heedlessness. If you, if you find discord within your family, if your wife and your children are defined of you, ask yourself, what have I done recently in defiance of my Lord? Because this is only coming from within myself. Hal jaza'ul ihsani illa al-ihsan is a reward of doing good other than receiving good. So if we do not find good, then we have not been doing good. When you have something that you desire, but you leave it for the sake of Allah, Allah promises that he will replace it with something, uh, with something good, if not with something better. When the wife of Pharaoh, Zulaikha, uh, tried to seduce Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi he abstained out of fear of Allah, and he chose even prison over committing adultery. And then in that moment, because Sayyidina Yusuf had dominated his lust, then you see everything come full circle. Then Allah, because he dominated himself, Allah gave him dominion over, over the world. He gave him dominion over all of Egypt. And he ended up marrying Zulaikha, the woman who he would have done, committed adultery with in the first place. Hal jaza'ul ihsani illa al ihsan. Is the reward of doing good other than receiving that same good but better? The muhajirun, they left their most precious possessions behind them when they went on hijra, left behind their lands, they left behind their homes. Many of them left behind their, their families. They left everything to do to the hijrah for the sake of Allah. And Allah brought everything back full circle. Allah rewarded them by letting them take command and control of Mecca. And not only Mecca, not only the lands that they had lost, but more was Ziyadah. He gave them control of the entirety of the Arabian Peninsula and beyond. Hal jaza'ul ihsani illa al ihsan. And so, so examine your, yourselves truly, without pretense. What, where are you reluctant to submit to Allah, to submit to your Lord? What is it that you desire so much? What is it that you fear so much that keeps you from following that straight path to your Lord? Allah promises that if you surrender it to Him, if you surrender to Allah and for Allah, that you will be rewarded with the same kind of thing and even better. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا حُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةً Surrender your entire world to Allah, and Allah will surrender the entire world to you like he did with Yusuf salam. Deliver the, this world to him, and he will deliver the entirety of the world to you. Because when you surrender, you prove yourself to be the guardian, to be the khalifa, to have taken on the, that covenant that uh, Allah uh, uh, ordered us to when, when we took the covenant. We will, we will have proven ourselves true and worthy guardians, true and worthy khulafa of Allah on this earth.